Good afternoon, Keith Tebow from FRC Media. Hope you're having a great day, and thank you for joining us. We thought we'd take some time today to uh, get a COVID vaccine update, and uh, there's no person we'd rather have than the uh, medical director at the Health First Family Care Center, Dr. Eric Vaught. Dr. Vaught, thank you for joining me again. How are you? Hey, good afternoon, Keith. I'm doing well. You know, uh, let's start with, um, you know, something that we haven't spoken about since we last spoke was the um, instance of the vaccine now for children, uh, COVID vaccine ages 5 to 11. Right now, it's only the the Pfizer vaccine, uh, which Mm -hmm. is uh, eligible for students in those uh, that that age group. Um, What are you seeing in terms of, you know, any um, any youngsters coming to get the vaccine in um, at Health First? And I guess. What are some of the concerns parents may be having? And I guess, how safe is the vaccine for that that age group? Yeah, really good questions, Keith. So uh, a lot to unpack there. Um, as, as you pointed out, the, the indication for the COVID vaccine um, is now uh, available for 5 to 11-year-olds, uh, which is great. And it's exciting news that we're now able to vaccinate more of our population um, a lot of research was done uh, over the last year uh, since we really rolled out the, the COVID adult doses uh, in December of last year. And, and we've taken the time to really test the efficacy and the, and the safety of these pediatric doses. Um, and, and so uh, just a couple facts about the, the Pfizer vaccine uh, that is available uh, for 5 to 11-year-olds. It's a two-dose series. Uh, it's uh, given three weeks apart. Uh, the dose for the pediatric population is actually uh, less than the adult population in that five to 11 year old range. What the researchers found was, is that uh, giving uh, the half dose uh, uh, to the pediatric population was just as effective uh, in that age group. And and we would expect that given their smaller size and and, uh, uh, different immune system. But uh, the the vaccine is very effective uh, in that group. We, we, we really need uh, a vaccine in that age group as we've continued to see uh, COVID cases pop up in our schools and pop up in our uh, activity groups throughout the city. And so I just really want to advocate that uh, the parents really consider getting their child vaccinated. Uh, you can get your child vaccinated at, at any one of your pediatrician offices, including Health First. Uh, you can go to one of the local pharmacies um, or you can go to one of the pop up uh, clinics all over the city of Fall River. And if you just go to the FR Vax uh, website, you can see where those are at. Yeah. And actually, um, you know, in the coming week, uh, there's actually going to be some more vaccination clinics held at local schools in Fall River. I know there are a few coming up uh, in the next week or so. Let me just ask you, you know, in, in some of the parents that you may have come in, in contact with, um, are, are there any concerns? You know, it's funny when when you're a parent, um, and you see something that impacts you, you're m- more willing to take a chance on something like a vaccine, but maybe mm-hmm. for your child, not as much. Are you hearing any concerns from parents? And uh, what are they? What, what are some of their concerns? Yeah, I think the biggest concern or question that uh, keeps coming up, and, and I've seen uh, reports in the lay press and in, on news articles, uh, on news feeds and things, is, is the concern around pericarditis and myocarditis. Those are uh, fancy terms for inflammation around the heart. Um, and any viral illness can actually lead uh, as, a, as a consequence to inflammation around the heart. And we've seen COVID cases that have caused uh, myocarditis and pericarditis. In a very small uh, segment of, of people who get the vaccine, uh, they can develop uh, a pericarditis or myocarditis, but that risk is is so much smaller than actually getting the disease and then the subsequent uh, inflammation around the heart that I would still advocate for parents to consider getting their children uh, vaccinated. But it is a, a risk, and and we've been monitoring it very closely, especially in the teenage population and now in this younger population. Yeah. What about in terms of uh, booster shots? Um, you know, we we spoke uh, a while back about. You know, the boosters are now available. Now they're available in, you know, Moderna. If you had Moderna, Pfizer, uh, Johnson & Johnson, there's even an opportunity for you to do some mixing and matching of some of those um, some of those vaccines uh, for boosters. Are you seeing a, a, a large number of, of your patients or patients who receive the vaccine at Health First um, in that eligibility category? Are, are, are they showing up for their boosters? 
Absolutely. We, we have clinics available every week and those clinics continue to fill up. Um, our providers are educating our patients and, and letting them know that the booster is available and any outlet like this where we get to, to tell people that, yes, it's, it's a good idea to get a, a COVID booster at this point. Uh, the reason behind that is, is that uh, with many vaccines, uh, your body has an initial immune response, and that immune response can can wax or wane over time. Um, and so getting that booster uh, after six months uh, of the primary series can really help boost the immune system and really get us through this winter season um, and, and keep you and your family safe. Uh, so I would advocate for everyone to to sign up for a booster shot, uh, and and you can do that on the Fall River Vax site. You can do that through your local pharmacy, or you can come into the uh, the health center or or your uh, primary care physician's office. You know, the other thing that we're seeing um, here in Fall River and Bristol County is just the the general rate of vaccination. It has really plateaued for for quite a while now. We're currently, I believe, at about sixty two percent in Fall River. Um, that have received at least one dose, about 55, 56% who have received uh, two doses of the vaccine um, uh, under that scenario, still well below uh, the state average. Um, what are you hearing about, and I know that the city of Fall River has done a good job in trying to promote this and, and having vaccination clinics available and convenient for people. Um, you know, what, what are you trying to do in, in, in sharing with some of your patients who may not have, not have been vaccinated to at least to try to consider uh, getting the vaccine, even though, you know, the vaccine has been out for almost a year now. Yeah, this is a, this has been an ongoing challenge, as you pointed out. I think the city of Fall River and, and the public health department has done a, an excellent job of of educating the the community and then also providing opportunities to, to get vaccinated. Um, it, but with that, the, the challenge is, is that as we continue to have the spread of the disease in our community, we do uh, get very concerned about the the virus uh, changing and 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 additional variants becoming part of our um, uh, problem when it comes to combating the COVID virus. And so I I I, I can't stress enough that um, that people getting vaccinated so that we don't see the infection infection rate continuing to climb in the city so that we don't see the, the virus potentially mutate and, uh, and take on other variants is, is super important as we go through this uh, winter season. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen uh, somewhat of a uh, concerning trend uh, in the number of cases uh, in the local area over the last couple of weeks. And, and so the, the concern there being that uh, as we go into the winter months and people become more indoors, um, do we see the, the virus have another resurgence? And, and so um, getting vaccinated, uh, even if you've waited to this point, um, I think now we have even more strong evidence that getting vaccinated prevents you individually from, from having severe disease requiring hospitalization, but it also helps us as a population uh, prevent the spread uh, of new variants of the disease. And one other thing I want to I want to bring out um, is the fact that, you know, last time we spoke, we spoke mainly about the seasonal flu vaccine and being able to get that as we're entering the the traditional cold and flu season as the temperatures get a little colder. But I think what's important to note, and you can uh, confirm this, is that if you haven't gotten any of the vaccines, be it flu or covid, you can get them um, together if, if, if you wish or they don't. There doesn't need to be any um, any delay in between getting one over the other. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So the COVID vaccine can be given uh, with any other vaccine. Um, and so I highly encourage people to, to get their annual influenza vaccine at the same time they get their COVID vaccine. And the really exciting thing is, is that that population of five to 11 year olds who already need routine immunizations, they can go and see their pediatrician and get those routine immunizations and get the COVID vaccine right there in their pediatrician's office. Right. So, you know, we, we often forget that, um, you know, children are getting immunized uh, on a regular basis uh, based on uh, the, the schedule that has been set out by public health officials. And if they happen to be going in for one of those other routine um, immunizations, they can get uh, the COVID vaccine as well. Final question for you, doctor, as we head toward 2022, and we kind of I'm going to ask you to take out your crystal ball maybe a little bit here. Um, is the anticipation that in terms of COVID vaccines moving forward, that 
there may be a need for either a fourth booster for some people or that uh, maybe a year from now when we get our seasonal flu vaccine, there may be an opportunity to get a, a COVID uh, yearly vaccine as well. What, do, what are you hearing there? Yeah, so this is something that uh, epidemiologists and medical researchers are, are constantly following uh, when it comes to viruses and, and the way that they spread and the way that they mutate over time, uh, which is one of the reasons why every year our flu vaccine is slightly different than the year before is because we're, we're constantly looking for changes in the variant. And so what I anticipate happening is, is that we'll continue to follow this COVID virus and it may in fact, uh, new variants may uh, arise. And if they do, uh, the current vaccines that are available will be tested against those variants. And researchers will determine whether or not uh, additional boosters or, or specialized um, changes to the COVID vaccine are necessary to combat those uh, new variants. I could very well see us uh, getting to a point where the uh, annual influenza is actually a combination vaccine uh, of influenza and COVID variant strains uh, that we that we uh, take as a as an annual uh, shot. Yeah, very interesting stuff, and we continue to learn every day. And you know, um, I know I'm personally amazed at just the advancement of science uh, throughout the past 19 months or so, 20 months now since uh, the um, pandemic began, on how quickly we really turned this around. And and I know that a lot of the research had been done even even prior to the pandemic hitting in terms of uh, getting aware for this. So it's very, very uh, interesting and, and important uh, research. Dr. Eric Vaught, I appreciate your time as always. Um, have a great day and we'll talk again soon. Sounds good. All right. And thank you for joining us here in FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great day.